Today I'm reviewing Scythe's newest CPU cooler, the Fuma 2. It sits in a nice mid-range category of CPU coolers, coming in at $60. In this review I'll be comparing it to the winners of my mid-range cooler roundup, the Noctua NHU14S and the Scythe Ninja 5. And to make sure you're getting your money's worth, I'll also be comparing it to the winners of my budget cooler roundup, the Arctic Freezer 34 Esports Duo and the Scythe Mugen 5 Revision B. If you missed those previous CPU cooler roundup videos, check the links in the description. It's a great way to get an overview of the coolers available on the market right now. At the time I made those videos, the Fuma 2 is very new, so I didn't include it. But I always did want to review it because I was very impressed with the Scythe coolers I already tested. So finally I'm able to do a full review of the Fuma 2. Without further ado, let's start analyzing the Fuma 2 and see how it stacks up to its competitors. First, let's look at the price of the Fuma 2 compared to the others. It sits around the middle of the group here at $60, matching Scythe's own Ninja 5 and about $10 more than Scythe's Mugen 5. It's definitely not a budget cooler, but it's still reasonably priced, so let's analyze it further to see if it's worth the cost. One of the most important things you have to figure out before buying a CPU cooler is whether it will actually fit in your system. Here I've analyzed the Fuma 2 and its competitors to see approximately how many cases and motherboards they will fit in, according to PC Part Picker's compatibility tool, and how tall your RAM can be to fit underneath them. We can see the Fuma 2 has excellent compatibility, coming in at the top of the pack, tied for first with the Mugen 5 Revision B. The Fuma 2 is not too tall, only 154.5 millimeters, which lets it fit in a lot of different cases. Scythe has also made sure it's compatible with a ton of different motherboards, including the most popular Intel LGA1151 and AMD AM4. It has unlimited RAM height, which is great for those of you who have tall RAM heat sinks, or if you just want to be able to see and access your RAM at all times. Note in this graph that Ninja 5 doesn't fit well in many ITX boards. It overhangs the back of the board, so I have removed many ITX cases and motherboards from its score. Also, the NHU14S doesn't fit well in micro-ATX boards. It blocks the first PCIe slot, therefore I have removed micro-ATX cases and motherboards from its score. Luckily, the Fuma 2 doesn't have any of those problems. It works well in all form factors, which makes it a compatibility king. The only thing you'll really have to worry about with compatibility for the Fuma 2 is its height. As long as your case can fit 154.5mm tall CPU coolers, you should be good to go. The Scythe coolers I've tested in the past were extremely easy to install, and the Fuma 2 is no exception. The whole installation process is just very smooth, and reminds me a lot of the ease of Noctua cooler installations. The instructions are great, with fantastic visuals that show you exactly how to perform each step. The fans fit nicely into grooves on the heatsink, which makes it very easy to line up the fans horizontally. Lining up the fans vertically can be a bit more difficult, but looking at the visuals and the instructions, you can see they should be placed with the top holes just above the heatsink. Overall, ranking the Fuma 2's installation compared to its competitors, I'd put it in second place, just narrowly losing to Scythe's own Mugen 5, simply because the Mugen 5 has one less fan to install. All of these coolers, though, are quite easy to install, so not a huge difference between them. It's good to know that Scythe's installation hasn't changed much between its coolers. They're all very well designed. I have to admit I'm a bit of a fanboy of Scythe's cooler design. They have the same professional understated look of Noctua coolers, but without the brown color scheme. Instead they are black, gray, and silver, making them fit very well with other computer parts. The Fuma 2 follows the same pattern and looks great in my opinion. It has a nice subtle cross Scythe logo on top of the black heatsink covers, which adds some nice flair. One interesting thing to note about the Fuma 2 is it has one normal sized fan in the middle and a slim fan in the front. This is what allows it to have full RAM clearance. The slim fan prevents it from blocking your RAM. Cooler appearance is very subjective though. Everyone likes different looks. But if I had to rank the Fuma 2's appearance to its competitors, I'd put it in a tie for first place with everything except the NHU14S, which is a step below the competition due to those annoying brown fans. The Fuma 2 looks great though, and would fit well in almost any system. One thing I wondered though about the Fuma 2 is will its slim front fan have any effect on performance? Let's find out. I tested the Fuma 2 at 5 different fan speeds from lowest to highest, with a 95W CPU heat load. I recorded temperature and noise at each fan speed, and then graphed the results, giving you a nice visual representation of how the Fuma 2 performs over the full range of its capability. 
Here is a graph showing how the FUMA2 performs compared to its competitors. This graph may look a bit complicated at first, but it's actually very simple once you understand the golden rule. Lower is better. We want lower temperatures and lower noise, so the lines that are further down and to the left are the best. Starting at the lowest fan speeds, we can see the FUMA2 in red here performs almost identically to the Freezer 34 eSports Duo. It has a good low noise level at its lowest fan speeds, essentially matching all the rest of the coolers in this roundup. It also has very decent temperatures at this lowest speed, but it can't get quite as low as the Ninja 5 in green here, most likely due to the Ninja 5's huge heatsink, which makes it an excellent passive cooler. Moving on to the next fan speed point, we can see it performs almost identically to all the rest of these coolers. Then at the middle fan speed point, it gains a significant temperature advantage over the Ninja 5 and the Mugen 5 Revision B, and matches the Freezer 34 Esports Duo, but is outperformed by the NHU-14S. At the next fan speed point, the FUMA2 excels, outperforming all the coolers except the NHU-14S. Then at the highest fan speeds, it still has lower temperatures than everything except the NHU-14S, but it does produce excessive noise without hardly any drop in temperature. It would have been nice if the noise was a bit lower at high speeds, like its brother the Ninja 5, but the FUMA2 just has higher speed fans. So overall ranking these coolers, we can put the FUMA2 in second place, due to its excellent low temperatures at higher fan speeds. The NHU-14S does have the best overall performance, but it also has pretty terrible compatibility, among other issues. So considering the FUMA2's other outstanding attributes, this is an extremely strong showing for the FUMA2's performance. Now let's see how the FUMA2 handles my heat torture test of 185 watts of CPU heat load. This test is relevant for those of you who really push your CPU to the limit, like overclockers, and those who do very CPU intense tasks, like video encoding and rendering. Note in this graph that none of these coolers can keep the CPU from overheating at the lowest fan speeds, so that point had to be omitted. Starting at the lowest speed the FUMA2 could handle, we can see that it's a bit hotter than most of these coolers, and a lot hotter than the Freezer 34 Esports Duo. Then at the next fan speed point, we can see it matches the Ninja 5, but performs significantly hotter than the rest of the pack. Then at the next fan speed point, it starts to outperform the Ninja 5, and matches the Mugen 5 Revision B, but is outclassed by the Freezer 34 Esports Duo and the NHU-14S. Finally, at the highest fan speed, it reaches the middle of the pack, besting the Ninja 5 and the Mugen 5 Revision B, almost reaching the same temperatures as the Freezer 34 Esports Duo, but solidly beaten by the NHU-14S. As mentioned in the last test, the FUMA2 does produce quite a bit of noise at the highest speed, but this time that noise may be justified, as it is able to reach slightly lower temperatures. So overall, we can put the FUMA2 in fourth place here for high heat performance. Definitely not as good as its 95 watt performance, but still not bad at all. It is able to compete well with these other coolers, but can't quite reach the same level as the top tier performers here. Now let's look at the FUMA 2's warranty compared to the rest. We can see it comes in at two years, just like the rest of Scythe's coolers. Not a terrible warranty, but it would always be nice if it was longer for peace of mind. You can see the NHU-14S has a much longer warranty at six years, and the Freezer 34 Esports Duo has an insanely long warranty of 10 years. It's not so much that the FUMA 2's warranty is bad, it's just extremely hard to compete with Noctua and Arctic's industry-leading warranties. So now we've gone over all the important characteristics of the FUMA 2. Price, compatibility, installation, appearance, performance, and warranty. And it's time to ask the ultimate question. Is it worth buying? If you're looking for a great performing mid-range cooler with excellent compatibility, great looks, easy installation, and a reasonable price, the FUMA 2 is a great choice. It definitely earns a spot among the best mid-range coolers I've tested. One interesting thing to note is that it's better than Scythe's own Ninja 5 in almost every way, so I would definitely recommend it over the Ninja 5 if you have a choice to buy either one. The Ninja 5 actually won my runner-up award in my mid-range cooler roundup video, so the fact that the FUMA 2 beats it is quite high praise. There is one mid-range cooler that clearly outperforms the FUMA 2 though the NHU-14S. If you want the best performance at a mid-range price, that would be your best bet. However, the NHU-14S has a lot of other issues like very poor compatibility, a slightly higher price, and brown fans that can be an eyesore to many. So the FUMA2 is a really nice alternative 
that fixes all the weaknesses of the NHU14S while performing only slightly worse. So overall, I would definitely recommend the Scythe Puma 2 if you're looking to buy a top tier mid-range CPU cooler. It definitely earns my hardware scientist highly recommended award. I'm continually impressed by Scythe coolers and the Fuma 2 is no exception. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment, and hit subscribe to see more computer part reviews coming soon. If you really want to help out, hit the share button to share this video with others on places like Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, forums, and other social media. I appreciate all your support, and I hope this video helped you make better consumer decisions. See you next time.